This screencast is on the propensity to save and consume and the multiplier effect. Um, we're going to go through what the multiplier effect is about and then also all of the different formulas that you need to know. So I would definitely take, be taking some notes and creating a formula sheet if you don't already have one. So first off, when we're talking about um, what people can do with their money, their money would be their disposable income, the amount of income that they have to spend. They can either spend it or they can save it. So when you think about disposable income, disposable income equals consumption plus savings. So when we talk about the propensity to consume or the propensity to save, and it could be the average propensity to consume or save or the um, marginal propensity to consume or save, we're basically looking at the inclination or tendency that people have. When we talk about the average propensity to consume, the formula that we're looking at here is the consumption that people spend over their disposable income. So it's about the average amount that you spend based upon how much you have to be able to spend. The average propensity to save would be savings divided by the disposable income. So in this one here, we're just looking at the general. Um, but that's not how economists think. We're rational people and we think at the margin. And so what we're looking at is the additional income that we earn, that additional disposable income, and how that affects the amount that we consume. So instead of taking consumption divided by disposable income, what's key here is that the marginal propensity to consume, known as the MPC, equals the change, which would be a delta sign in consumption, divided by the change in disposable income. This is a really important formula because sometimes on a test or on the AP exam, you might be giving a, given a chart where you'll have consumption and disposable income and all of a sudden you'll be asked to figure out the multiplier. Well, in order to figure out the multiplier, you need to know the MPC and the MPS, and so this is a way to be able to get to that. Just like the marginal propensity to consume is the change in consumption over disposable income, the marginal propensity to save is going to be the change in savings divided by the change in disposable income. This one's really important because really when we talk about the multiplier, I'd like us really to concentrate on that formula using MPS instead of MPC. So when we're talking about the marginal propensities and the multiplier, one of the things to remember is that the MPC plus the MPS, which are these decimals because they're really like percentages, 75% is 0.75, um, they add together to make one. The same is true with APC and APS if you were asked about that. So if you're looking at this one here, if you have an MPC of 0.75 and you have an MPS of 0.25, then when you're looking at that extra dollar, that's how much of each you're going to have of the MPC and the MPS because together they will equal one. Um, if you're given an extra $10, obviously, then you would multiply that by 10, and that's where you'd have 750 and 250, because you're taking there the 0.75 of the 10, and that's where you're getting those numbers. So when we're talking about the multiplier, I mean, to an economist, this is really exciting, because again, when you spend money, that is income from somebody else. And so that allows more money to be created. So when you go to the store, you should definitely smile at the cash, the person behind the cash register because the spending that you're giving is income to them. And so that's a lot of the reason why people smile. A lot of people think it's because, oh, I'm walking out with something that I want which can happen, but it also has to do with the fact that we are multiplying uh, the money as we are spending it because it is somebody else's income. So when you think about GDP, because again, macroeconomics is really about looking at these different components here with C plus IG plus G plus XN, when somebody spends or they invest by $5 million, 
the multiplier is going to have that five million explode and become so much more of how it impacts a total real GDP or total output. So um, when we're looking at things then, we need to know how that multiplier impacts the amount of money that is created. There's different multipliers. We're going to talk about investment multiplier, the government spending multiplier, and also the tax multiplier. So the investment multiplier is 1 over MPS. Uh, a lot of times, too, you'll see it as 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. But again, if you remember the MPS, this will become very helpful, especially when you talk about the tax multiplier. So 1 divided by the MPS gives you the investment multiplier. If I want to look at how much money is created or the change in GDP, then you look at that change in investment or the initial deposit, the amount that is spent, or the, autonomous, the change in autonomous aggregate spending, as your book says. And you multiply that times the multiplier, which again here is 1 divided by MPS. Um, remember, too, though, you could also be thinking um, about how to calculate the multiplier if you didn't have the MPS and MPC, if you were given the consumption and incomes and looking at the change in consumption divided by the change in disposable income. And that's another way to get to the MPC and then the MPS. So you have the investment multiplier. You also have the government spending multiplier. So this would be about, instead of it being about a person and them spending, this would be about the government and what they would be doing. And again, it's that same total output growth, that change in real GDP, and how it's the change in the government spending. Let's say that the government spends $100 at a, um, a, a supply store then that's how you would be able to look at, well, how much does that money multiply? And you use the multiplier in order to do it. And again, the multiplier would be 1 divided by the MPS. The third way is the tax multiplier. And what we're looking at here with the tax multiplier is this could be where the government decides to decrease taxes or you could have it where the government increases taxes. Because if they increase taxes, that's obviously going to subtract from the um, total amount that is being spent. So for this one here, you look at the change in GDP and you calculate that by looking at the change in taxes times the multiplier. The tax multiplier is going to be a negative number. And so when we are looking at an increase in taxes, it's going to be subtracting from it. Um, the marginal propensity to consume divided by the marginal propensity to save. That's why if you remember 1 over MPS, now you just exchange 1 with the negative MPC. So the investment multiplier means the same thing as the government spending. So these two formulas are the exact same thing because you're using the 1 over the MPS. The investment multiplier and the government spending multiplier are always positive. The tax multiplier, on the other hand, is always negative. So when you're looking at some things, some things to remember if ever you're given a problem, 1 over um, 1 minus MPC gives you the multiplier. And so with that, the larger the MPC, the greater the multiplier is going to be, right? And so that's how you're able to see what that multiplier is going to be. Um, and some good ones just to remember for tests, so that way when you're giving them on a test, you'll kind of be able to reference it there. So if I was taking 1 divided by the MPS would obviously be a 0.1. So 1 divided by 0.1 gives you a multiplier of 10. Um, for this one here, 1 divided by the MPS is 0.5. So 1 divided by 0.5 gives you a multiplier of 2. You can't use a calculator, so you've got to be able to do these yourselves if you're not um, remembering these or memorizing these. 
So here you can see this change in income that happens if you were to continually take this $5 that you have in the increase in um, spending or investment here, or the change in autonomous automatic spending, and you would look and see, well, if they're going to spend um, 75% and they're going to save 25 then this would be the amount of income or growth that would happen. And if you continually kept on going until you had nothing left, that's then how much you would see of the money that was created. So when we're talking about the change in GDP, you're using that multiplier, the 1 over MPS, times the initial change in the spending. And we'll exp keep going on with the multiplier. That's why this is kind of like a foundational one where it's really right now about the formulas. But we'll see how this um, affects the graphs later.